Dear participants, I'm Zhukova Ksenia and uh, today I'm going to present uh, some results uh, of joint work with uh, Professor Morozov uh, on estimation of the large deviation probability in retrial queues. Uh, large deviation analysis is uh, directly related to the evaluation of uh, quality of service uh, or in uh, telecommunication and computer networks. And uh, one of such a uh, quality of service parameter is uh, a so-called overflow probability. Uh, it's a probability, for example, that uh, the orbit size or the number of customers in the queue or buffer uh, content um, will exceed some uh, high given uh, level. <clears throat> this uh, problem of estimating and uh, calculating uh, the uh, overflow probability and mostly the asymptotic of uh, this probability <clears throat> have been studied uh, before. And uh, there are some well-known results for classic uh, systems, tandem queues and retrial systems. Uh, the result uh, I'm presenting today is uh, some kind of extension of our previous uh, previous research on uh, estimating uh, asymptotic of overflow probability in retrial queues. In previous uh, works and papers, we um, developed some large division analysis for uh, multi-server retrial queues and uh, constructed upper and lower bounds for asymptotic of overflow probability in multi-server queues. This probability uh, was considered during a regenerative cycle and during a full busy cycle. And uh, now we decided to extend uh, these uh, uh, results to the case of um, several orbits. And today I'm going uh, to talk about two orbits. Uh, so, um, uh, a short description of the model and uh, uh, some notation. We consider a single server trial system with two orbits uh, with uh, uh, IAD interarrival times. And we consider two type of service time. Mm, uh, so the customer can uh, be uh, one of two types or classes. And um, it means that with uh, some probability uh, P that is given, the service time uh, can be S1 or uh, S2 with probability 1 minus P. Uh, we introduce the input rate lambda and service rates for each uh, type of service times mu1 and mu2. Since we consider the retrial queue, uh, there are some retrial policy. As usual, uh, we have uh, two infinite capacity virtual orbits. The retrial times uh, are exponentially distributed and uh, have different parameters to uh, each type of customers. So uh, if the customer of the service time one uh, meets a busy server, it goes to the first orbit, so to say, and it means that the inter-retrial um, times will be exponentially distributed with parameter gamma 1. And the same situation for the um, second type of service times. We consider constant retrial rate uh, policy, meaning that uh, the um, intensity of the retrials uh, remains constant, regardless um, of the orbit size. And uh, our interest is the uh, asymptotic of the probability that uh, the orbit size, uh, so the meaning the number of customers in the orbits um, will reach some uh, level and during a regeneration cycle. And we will consider the asymptotics. So uh, n goes to infinity. Uh, Re regeneration in our system occurs as usual when an arrival meets the empty system. So there are no customers on the server and on um, each of the orbits. 
And since it's an extension of our previous results, we tried to, um, to use uh, the idea of uh, um, compa uh, comparing the original system with uh, some classic systems that are well studied. So uh, the idea is uh, to consider retrial system as a, um, as a buffered system. And this interpretation will help us to, uh, to guess the bounds uh, based on the service times and the similar input in all the classic systems we consider. So the, the idea is that if we uh, try to um, to interpret a retrying system as a buffered system, meaning that each customer goes to the orbit or a buffer, um, regardless of the state of the server when it uh, meets, uh, uh, enters the system. So there are some kind of uh, queue, uh, common queue for all uh, customers. And then the situation uh, can be in two ways. Uh, if the arrival meets busy server, it goes to this buffer or orbit uh, as in original system and so is in the um, considered buffered system. But if the server is empty upon the arrival, uh, then the uh, arrival goes to orbit, but at the same time, the first in the queue, meaning the oldest uh, customer of the same class, goes to service. Uh, this um, comparison of two of these models and the uh, interpretation of the retrial model as a, such a buffered system allows us to, um, first of all, to uh, to show that, to be sure that the number of customers and the number of um, customers on the orbits, so the orbit size will be similar during the regeneration cycle in both um, the original and the buffered system. And uh, moreover, we can um, express the extra time that, um, um, that occurs in the retrial queue when the customer goes to the orbit. Uh, this gap that usually exponentially that is exp exponentially distributed in our case uh, can be um, interpreted as a part of service time. So we can compare different uh, variations of service times in different uh, systems and uh, buffered systems. And then we can do some estimations. So uh, this is the general idea and um, the first uh, case uh, we decided to, um, to assume the extra uh, assumption that um, our um, uh, retrials are uh, different and the, for, for example the first orbit is um, quicker than the second one meaning that the interval times is shorter so xi1 is less than xi2 all the inequalities and uh, uh, qualities uh, inequalities and qualities here is a stochastical so uh, in this case they know that the biggest delay or the extra time that the customer can have is uh, distributed as C2. So then uh, in the buffered system I described uh, earlier, the service time can be written as uh, formula two. Uh, so it's the sum of the um, S service time depending on the class of the customer and uh, plus some um, delay, possible delay, that cannot be um, greater than the um, C2 here <clears throat> in our case. So uh, then we can um, construct the minoring value for service times. It, for example, we can erase uh, this additional time Cn and for the measuring value, we can um, add the maximum of uh, the possible delays. So in our case, in, it's C2 that is exponentially distributed. 
And then, uh, if we consider the classical buffered systems with the uh, same it input as in uh, original retrial system and service times um, with um, service times distributed as in formula three and four, then we can um, formulate the result and uh, construct the lower and upper bounds based on the uh, well-known result for classical systems. In, uh, so in uh, original retrial system, the number of customers and the orbit size will be no, uh, between these two SL and uh, between number will be between the number of customers, so the same values in system with service times three and service times uh, four, they will be like bounds for the original system. And uh, so we, we mm, formulate the result. Uh, assuming the uh, order between XE1 and XE2 and some extra additional that um, provides the stationarity, we can uh, <clears throat> maintain that the uh, asymptotic of overflow probability in the retrial system will be uh, bounded by these two values, uh, lambda, uh, lambda tau uh, of minus theta asterisk sub asterisk and uh, similar for the majoring value I described earlier. Uh, for the same log moment generating function for the input interarrival times. So uh, the parameters theta here are defined as follows. And um, again, they are uh, um, constructed by the, no, according to the minoring and majorant uh, systems, classic and buffered. So it's, uh, um, with a reference to the well-known result. Since the uh, inter-retrial times are exponentially distributed, here is um, some addition uh, log uh, of the exponentially distributed uh, random variable C2. Yeah. So, um, uh, the, this uh, estimation and this uh, upper bound we discussed earlier is of course uh, rather uh, rough because uh, we add this extra um, time uh, for the biggest possible value. And um, there are some opportunity to, uh, uh, to uh, to make this bound more accurate. And uh, this is the second situation. And now we consider any um, relation between the um, inter uh, retrials on the orbits. Uh, we don't need the stochastical inequality here. So we come back to the uh, representation of the service times in the buffered system as a service time plus some extra time on the orbit. And uh, now uh, with the same lower or um, minoring value for the service times, we change a bit the majoring value and we add this uh, extra time as a, um, corresponding to the type of the customer. So uh, this allows to uh, make the bound more sensitive to the uh, to the distributions of uh, service times and uh, inter-trial times. And um, again, it will be uh, uh, less than, uh, if we use the coupling and try to uh, com compare the service times uh, in the buffered, and, uh, buffered system and the uh, SU, the me measuring value. So it will be, um, of course, greater. So uh, the result is formulated in theorem two. Again, we need some uh, stability condition here. And then the asymptotic of the overflow probability will be bounded by these values. And uh, in this case, it's uh, uh, more complicated to calculate this log moment generating function for the measuring value uh, because um, of some properties of um, 
uh, log moment generating functions and the because of the distributions that can be um, in the uh, uh, that can be uh, included for description of the service times. Uh, so uh, for the simulation, uh, for the simulation, and to show the um, relation between these two cases, uh, we choose uh, to uh, generate um, the retrial Q with um, exponentially distributed interval times and exponentially distributed uh, service times S1 and S2. Uh, in this case, it's possible to calculate all, all the log moment generating functions and uh, compare the results to the uh, simulation results to the theoretical results. So there are some uh, parameters, retrial rates, uh, probability uh, for the classes and uh, the, mm, the steps of the simulation was uh, following. First, we um, estimated the asymptotic probability uh, in, uh, with the help of simulating the retrial queue. And then we calculated the um, theoretical results uh, that presented in theorem 1 and theorem 2. And here uh, you can see the result. Uh, the black uh, line is the estimation of the overflow probability. The green dotted line is um, the, uh, the upper bound for the second case from theorem two. And uh, um, the black dotted lines are uh, lower and upper bound for the first case. And the uh, lower bound is the same in both cases, of course. So we can see that the green line is closer to the estimation uh, and uh, um, it's uh, reasonable because of the more sensitive uh, bound. So for the uh, conclusion, um, uh, I would like to um, say that the result that we got in theorem one uh, can be generalized uh, for, to the case of uh, several orbits if there are uh, some order between the orbits and the theorem 2 can be also generalized to the case of the more orbits uh, but the, um, there are can there, there can be some um, some uh, not problems but maybe um, some uh, roughness between the bounds and uh, in this case we need the exponential distributed interval times. But the idea that we used for the previous results of, uh, for estimating the asymptotics of the overflow probability in uh, retrial uh, queues with one orbit is also can be applied for the case of several orbits. And uh, there are some references uh, we used and for the latest results. Thank you for your attention.